Hi, I'm Ryan Pesch, uh, proprietor of Lida Farm. I operate a vegetable operation in Ottertail County. And today we're in Mana Food Co-op in downtown Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. So I thought it was a nice opportunity to talk a little bit about I don't know, marketing local food to a local grocery, right? Um, here we are, it's July, so we certainly are getting more and more local things in at the co-op. And it's not, not uncommon for a lot of vegetable operators like ourselves to, to market to local co-ops. We got some mushrooms, zucchini, the cukes, some of these garlic scapes, kale is now local. Uh, myself, at this time, I'm selling salad mix, as you see here on the sign. It's got my little logo on here, check that out. Uh, we're doing the, uh, the zucchini here as well. Um, and some of the other products are from other local producers. So I just thought it'd be an opportunity to talk about, A, how do we approach uh, a buyer for a grocery store? Uh, how do you work with a buyer from a grocery store? How do we think about merchandising or helping the store merchandise our product? Uh, and also talk a little bit about how do we keep a nice organized invoice while we're selling product to a grocery store. That's a lot of bills to take care of. Um, so here is our example of salad mix. This is not, nothing too, too special. As you see, uh, man already has their own set cards that they use to distinguish organic product from local product. So in this instance, um, they're adding our own farm name. I didn't give them any kind of piece of merchandising or point of sale, but somebody certainly could. Uh, we did stick our little sticker here to try to identify ourselves, but if you wanted to get fancy, certainly people, you could give your, your produce operator a little shelf talker or a, or a card that's similar to their own price cards that they can hang up here. It's a way of you helping them to better sell your product in the store. One thing I, I think it's important if you're selling to a grocery store is what do you need to do to kind of start that relationship uh, with that produce buyer? So depending on the size of the store, um, you might have people that are department heads, in which case you would want to talk to the produce manager if you're marketing produce, or obviously a grocery manager if there's something like a jam or jelly or something you're marketing. Um, but if you're a smaller store here at Mana Food Co-op, we essentially have one buyer. That person happens to be my wife in this instance. <laughs> but uh, so you might just say, you know, who's your buyer or who's, who does the buying for your produce department? That, that, that's a, a very reasonable question to ask of anybody in the store. Uh, they ought to know that. And then after, after, you, get a, after you get that connection, it's a matter of, uh, think of it like a sales call. Nothing to be too worried about it. Just uh, you just want to present about what you're intending on selling to the, to the co-op or the grocery store, um, what products you have, you know, a little bit about your operation. You want to just sort of uh, present yourself in the best light. Uh, the greatest interest for a, um, a produce buyer really is consistency. The name of the game in grocery is consistency. They're looking for consistent product, fairly consistent pricing, consistent ordering. That is what you need to emphasize. And, and even before you try to sell to a grocery store, ask yourself if that's really what you wanna do or can you do that? Are you to the place where you can kind of consistently on a weekly basis, check in, have good quality product consistently each week? Um, otherwise it might, you might not just not you, you might just not be ready yet. I guess is it is an issue. You might spend a little more time selling at a farmer's market until you feel like you can can consistently bring a product and really build that consistent relationship uh, with a buyer. I do think that if you're selling produce to a store, it's very appropriate to check things out, right? Try to understand, um, get a sense about what types of products that they're carrying in the store. Um, and you know, like any good co-op or grocery store, you typically a full line of product. Uh, you might, if you have a very niche product, you might be asking yourself, huh, is this a kind of store that would carry a niche product like this? Uh, if it seems like they're, they're selling very basic things, they may not be very interested in something 
specialty like a microgreen or specialty mushrooms or something like that. But certainly with a somebody that has a very wide produce selection, they might be very interested in some of those specialty products. Um, do I check out uh, the what quality a product is on the shelf? You're like, okay, ah, yeah, I can grow cucumbers like this. Yeah, look at these are nice and see how nice and consistent they are. Yeah, I think I can do that. It, so you get a sense about what you can and can't do. Um, if you're used to selling at a farmer's market and you're selling, you know, all shapes and sizes all at one price, you're like, I don't know, these are these guys are too perfect for me. Again, you might not be at that place where it's like, I'm ready to do this consistency that's necessary to sell at a grocery store. The other thing you might look at are just prices. And one thing to, to note uh, on prices, kind of, a, kind of an industry standard in terms of, of pricing at, at grocery stores, probably anything between 25 up to a 40% margin is put on top of your product. So, uh, if, if you're looking at, say, these alfalfa sprouts, they're retailed at 249. If you multiply that by 0.65, that would be a 35% margin that the, the store is doing. So 65% of this 249, that would be what they're paying uh, for those alfalfa sprouts, somewhere in there. And so just as you're looking at the quality of product and you're saying, can I hit that quality? that these guys need to sell in the store, you might look at pricing and you're just saying, can I hit that price? Can I kind of be within the price that's necessary to be competitive with what they're already, already buying, right? So again, uh, once you talk to the buyer, there might be some flexibility. They might pay a little bit of a premium for local product. They might just love the story of your operation. They wanna have you in the store, great. Uh, but at least perusing the prices and taking out the margin that the store is putting on will give you some sense about, hey, I'm in the ballpark, this is workable for me or not. So another thing you'd think about is kind of how local product is packaged in the store. So for example, this is my own salad mix. Uh, it's not in this super fancy commercial box or what have you. You know, I'm not at this level of marketing, but uh, I will bring kind of a consistent size salad mix, about an eight ounce salad mix, consistently in terms of its weight and packaged like this. Oftentimes when I'm on my game, I'll take these little stickers and I'll put them here, right? And then you can line it up and everybody can say, oh, that's Lida Farm. And so that's helpful to the grocer. It's also helpful to me uh, in part because here in Detroit Lakes, uh, I used to sell at the farmer's market for 14 years. People know Lida Farm and Lida Farm produce. so. And again, in that respect, you're a nice partner to your grocer. You're helping sell the product and you're also helping your customers say, oh yeah, that's my stuff. I thought we'd talk a little bit about understanding industry or produce standards. Um, so this is an example here. We're bringing in some zucchini uh, for the co-op. And if you see it's uh, here in this half bushel wax box, um, Myself here in Minnesota, I get all these, I get all of my wax boxes for our CSA or for wholesale accounts from Jordan's in Woodbury. Uh, it's probably the most common place people are picking up wax boxes, but I'm sure other suppliers are out there. Um, I think what is important, depending on the crop, is to understand how it's typically packed, right? Um, and look, if you want to, have a good relationship with your produce buyer, you might just say, hey, can I, you know, I'm looking to sell you broccoli. How do you typically get it? What does it typically look like? And, and actually a broccoli box is, um, it's a taller box. It's typically a 18 pound case is what it is. Um, zucchini is typically coming in this smaller, like a two layer flat. Um, you'll often see a, a two layer or one layer in terms of how people are getting tomatoes. and so. I think the more that you can at least understand what those uh, standards are for each product that you're looking to sell to a grocery store, the better. Because when, if you have a produce buyer who's typically, typically buying a 20 pound case of zucchini every time they buy zucchini and you give them a price for a case, 
you want it to be comparable to what they're typically buying so that they can kind of do that comparison in their head like, oh yeah, that's totally within the range of what we're normally doing. That's just fine. But if you come in and you you want to sell zucchini and you're totally outside the industry standards and you just bring in just dirty zucchini in some dirty Walmart bag, they're going to be like, what is this? Is this five pounds? Is this eight pounds? And why is it so dirty? Right? I mean, so again, there's an issue of quality that you're looking to hit. Um, if you and there's also the standard in terms of the pack size that you're looking to hit, so it's comparable. And I think in terms of of quality, again, like here's a zucchini. When I think of, oftentimes we're selling bigger zucchini at a farmer's market, right? That's not uncommon. There's actually people who come to farmer's market they're looking for bigger zucchini. Uh, but I definitely know that an industry standard for zucchini, we're often looking for this this zucchini that's still in the glossy stage, for example. And about yay, yay long, you know, I don't know, is that a little bigger in my hand or something? Um, and then as best we can to have them as consistent as possible. Yes, it's the pretty produce problem, right? But you need to take on the pretty produce problem because your grocery buyer now has that is taking on your problem. And if it's not pretty, now the pretty produce that doesn't sell is even more their problem. And as we always just say, when I was a green grocer in the cities is people eat with their eyes. And there's no doubt that a better looking display at a farmer's market is going to attract somebody and they're going to more readily buy. Uh, you just need to realize as a grower that your produce buyer, they, they don't need that stuff just to look good for three or four hours at one farmer's market. They need that product to look good for three to four days or five days in a refrigerated situation. And so that's part of the reason why green grocers and produce buyers are as picky as they are, in part because they just don't, they just don't have the margin to lose that much product and to have that much shrinkage. It needs to be pretty when it's first coming in because it isn't gonna be as pretty four and five days from, from then, and then they're gonna to have to get a new lot. So that's kind of the pretty, pretty produce problem. I do think well, another important standard when we're bringing in product is to make sure that we have a very clear invoice. So again, sometimes it's like, hey, why do I have to jump through all these hoops to sell you guys product? I get that. But I think the thing to realize for grocery stores is they have hundreds of these things. Um, here in this little tiny co-op, I write all the checks for it. I am writing dozens of checks a week. And it's very common for some of our local producers just to show up with a piece of paper and they're gonna write 12, 12 dozen eggs and thank you. And there's no date, <laughs> there's no total, there's no cost for the unit. Uh, it makes it very difficult, A, for you to get paid which is, I think, what you want, right? If you want to get paid, A, you want to leave a clear invoice, which has you, who you are. They know me here, so I'm just putting Light of Farm in my phone number. Uh, who I'm selling it to, the date I'm selling it, and what exactly I'm bringing in terms, of, and also the price per unit. The reason for this is so that your buyer can accurately price the product and get it on the shelf more easily. They don't have the time to call you and track you down in terms of, was that zucchini $1.80 a pound? Or what are you actually charging me? And the person writing the check has no time to chase you down to figure out exactly what you need to get paid. And the reason they need the date is this thing's more likely going into some QuickBooks program and getting into a queue of a whole bunch of bills. And you want to make sure that you get in, in line to get paid. And so it's extremely important to kind of just have a clear invoice and make sure that that is left with the product, right? So one important component about selling to a grocery store is consistent communication. Um, I think in my experience, having worked in a produce department for three years and having been involved in the management of a grocery store, 
um, and knowing a number of people that have been involved in grocery, um, if you've got a good product, uh, that's a, the thing that matters most. Uh, but what also matters is some type of weekly check-in. And I think it is just fine whether it is by email or by phone, but what matters is that it's consistent. Um, most grocery people are used to ordering on a consistent day, <laughs> right? So their main wholesaler, there might be a Monday order for a Thursday delivery or a Tuesday order for a Friday delivery. That's essentially the, the flow of work that grocery folks are used to. And it doesn't matter that you're talking or communicating with your buyer in Tuesday or Thursday and then delivering two days later or three days later. Uh, I think what does matter is that you kind of consistently checking in. And I think doing so by phone, if that works for your buyer, great. If it's by email, that's fine. By text, maybe. I used to have a restaurant account and he was a big texter. So I would just send him a text about what I had on one day. And then he would let me know the next day what he wanted me to deliver the following day. And so I think the name of the game, uh, as I said, in the world of grocery is consistency. Consistent product, consistent quality, but also consistent communication.